I don't know what to say, really. They don't give us respect, but we about to take it today. Why? We got one of the best. You better check your reference. One inch at a time. You find out life's this game of inches. Now, what are you gonna do? I saw, saw, I saw. PTW, blow the whistle, coming back at you. Hey. I'm your host, D, the dopest therapist. It's Dame, not your average therapist, co-host over here. Season two, back at it again. Hey, man, we got another one. Welcome to Blow the Whistle. Yeah. It's an integrative podcast where we take our sports celebrities, we talk about mental health, we're big advocates for it, mind strong people, want to be advocates for helping and supporting everyone uh, has anxiety, everyone is healing. And this is a great podcast that we've started a platform to be able to voice that. Um, support us if you can. Hey man, the support has been great. I, I love the feedback, love season two episodes thus far. Hope you guys are enjoying them. If you missed season one, go back, go to our YouTube channel, go to our Instagram, like, subscribe, all those good things, man. But, but this week right here, I, I, I like this one. I, I like when you got defensive players on, on the show. This is one of the, by far, if you talk about you sit in the barbershop, you know, you at this, you know, the, the dinner table at the church. Yeah. You start talking ball on Sundays. Right. You talk about the top five hardest hitters Ooh. in, in, the, the, in the, the history. In the league history. This guy was one of them. He, he, he up there, man. Like he, he was. Man, I used to practice against him. Right now, <laughs> I'm glad we were studying. Right, right, you right. Know? But this guy, man, he, he oh, brought he it. But really, he, he never really give you. No, 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 no. Okay, no, no, no. I got this little skill set myself. But no, <laughs> yeah. But no, man. But I mean, first round pick. Yeah, but yeah. But a first round man too, man. Yeah, he's he's that type of guy. So I mean, talking about you know how many guys do you know? I'm just you know fact check real. Quick. How uh -huh. many guys do you know in college now? Uh -huh. Prime of your, yeah, you know your maturation as a man or whatnot, Absolutely. right? He's taking care of his, you know, his siblings. Wow, you know, he's he's the he's the he's the main guardian man. And right. So you saw you saw such a, a spiritual man, such a man, a focused and dedicated yeah. man. And, and uh, but like I say, when it came to getting inside those that that, that rectangle, yeah, oh man, yeah. oh he was something else. Oh man, Great hey, story. I'm looking forward to, to hearing his story. Of course, like D said. We combine sports and mental health, so we definitely want to take it under the helmet, underneath the helmet. You get to know that man. Um, and like you said, today we got Mr. Donovan Darius, you know, former Jag, all-time great uh, safety for those guys. What was he the, the inaugural season? No, no, that was what? No, that was ninety-five. So ninety-five. He was, he was, yeah, he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple no. years after that, but yeah, okay. great career in Jacksonville. But um, he definitely was one of those leaders. Absolutely. And Jackson's still, and still doing a great job in the community. Yes, so. and we're going to definitely dive into that. We're we, we going to let him talk about those things. So we're going to definitely bring him on here, man. Like I said, got Mr. Donovan Darius here in the building on Blow the Whistle. What's going on, fellas? D.D. What's going on? 
All is all is hey, well, my brother. All is well. I appreciate you guys inviting me on your show. I appreciate you know the topics, you know, uh, especially you know the the main topic about the mental health and the things that people people go through, and uh, you know, allowing people to share their stories. You know, letting people know that they're not alone. Um, doesn't matter what level you've accomplished. You know what I'm saying? We're all human in a fallen world, and, you know, we all go through different things. Well, man, I, I tell you, you talk about uh, the, the levels that we've been on. Um, you've been on, you know, the highest ones. Uh, but I just want to ask you about, you know, dive into just your transition, man, from from being uh, uh, aspir- aspiring, 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 excuse me, <laughs> uh, a pro athlete, right. uh, and in the midst of that, being also like I was mentioning to the audience, a a, a legal guardian for your siblings, man, and how that how that was such a different mindset. Like your whole your whole mental health has been seen from you know a, a long time from from my experience. So, but because of how different it was. You know, how is that being different and then using that mindset and that mentality as you move forward into these different levels of life where, you know, a lot of us want to be, you know, independent and kind of just enjoy those things, but you had a lot more that you had to kind of carry. Sure, I'll, I'll share a little bit about, you know, the transition with, with my brothers coming and then also the transition with, you know, leaving the league and stuff like that. And, you know, I actually had a couple of transitions, but... But I'll never forget, man. It was a Tuesday. I received a phone call from my mom. Uh, she left a voice message, told me to give her a call back. Um, she, you know, she said we lived in Camden, New Jersey, which was the third most dangerous city in the, in the country. Uh, oh. Said my brothers was at school, and somebody, you know, a gang, you know, rolled up on them and you know pulled out guns, this, that, and the other. And you know, of course, my mom was frightened. So that Thursday, they were on a bus. You know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. so. So while I was on the phone, I'm like, you know what? Send them to me. You know what I mean? So I didn't know how I was going to do it. I didn't know what was going to happen. I was living at Sky Top, which was, you know, basically student housing. And uh, I just knew that they couldn't be there. So, uh, so, so being, you know, so having that concern, I just, you know, said, send them to me so that they came up on that Thursday, that Monday they was enrolled in school. You know, I, you know, again, I, I had no idea what to do, but I reached out to the AD. I reached out to Coach Cash Galoni. You know what I mean? Just told him my situation. Matter of fact, Disney Plus has a movie out called Safety. You know what I'm saying? Where uh, mm. he took on his younger brother, man. I was like, man, that's like my story, but nobody gave me no royalties for it. Right, right, right. Uh, and, you know what I'm saying? But it, but it was it was cool, though, man. It was, you know, having them live with me on Sky Top. Then we lived off campus, you know, just watching them grow, being their father, brother, you know what I'm saying, friend, being a student, being an athlete. You know, it definitely was a whole lot. Um, but, but again, man, you know, I thank God for the guidance, for the friendships, for the brotherhood. Um, it really grew them up. If you talk to them to this day, they'll tell you that if it had not been for them coming up, they probably wouldn't be alive because of Mm -hmm. the the situation that they, they were in. But then also they developed a lot of friendships, you know I mean? They got to see college. Um, they also went to college afterwards, but they also got to see college from a different standpoint. Um, and so from a transition standpoint with me, uh, transitioning to that, you know, it, it caused greater responsibility. Um, you know, uh, you know, growing up with a father who went to Vietnam, who did, who came back with just some, some disabilities and, you know, addictions and stuff like that. Uh, it definitely allowed me an opportunity to, to, to provide for my family and, and, and be there for them. Um, even though I was aspiring to go to the next level. And so, so that was, so that was good, man. I was glad and I was happy that they were able to, um, you know, go off to college, you know what I'm saying? Pursue their dreams, you know, in college, one was a boxer, one, one was a basketball player. Um, so they went off and then they, they did that and they're successful, you know what I mean? To this day. And so that was my transition, you know, you know, kind of my mental transition from there. Uh, it really grew me. It really grew me up. You know what I mean? As well, um, talking about the league and the transition, I think um, one of the things that I did is I started working with uh, the NFL as a transition coach. Uh, they mm-hmm. call it that program, transition assistant program, where um, we were basically transition coaches. And for most people, not everybody, most people has a, have, have about a three-year transition. 
a mm-hmm. two to three year transition. Um, and, and what that is, is you go from doing something your whole life to, you know, that created your schedule, that created your time, that created your motivation, your purpose, all that to now all of a sudden you have to create that. You know what I mean? You, you know, because you got to remember when you're done playing football, nobody needs somebody who knows how to tackle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nobody needs somebody who knows how to hit, you know what I'm saying, the one hole. You know what I'm saying? Know how to take a, you know, a speed toss. I mean, nobody needs that. So you you have to really redefine yourself. And um, that could be a very strange place because you're uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I felt, you know, in that time, you know what I'm saying, transitioning, you know, from, you know, from, from the league, you know what I'm saying? You know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, I was very, very uncomfortable, you know, with it. You know, we moved out to California. I was out there with the Raiders uh, just for a short stint. Um, but, you know, but just trying to really define who it was that I was, what is it that mm-hmm. I wanted to do. And um, that TAP program really, you know, kind of helped, you know, start me on my road. But, you um, but yeah, the transition is, is is true for everybody, you know, and and it yeah, looks different. Everybody. So I'm I'm glad I went I went through it and um, and you know and from my transition, what came out of my transition was I remember riding on a plane, and uh, my instructions were to write down the things that mean the most to me um, and what that looked like. And so from that standpoint, I wrote down a sports program where I did sports youth camps. I wrote down a foundation that focused on character, action, motivation, and purpose, you know what I'm saying, for family, providing resources for them um, and creating experiences for them that they would not have. And then I create, you know, I wrote down, you know, speaking, just basically sharing my story, you know, um, whether corporately, whether, you know, academically, whatever it was. And so, so from that, I was able to, start to build what what that looked like yeah that's awesome yeah and, and Dom, again thank you for for joining us here on blow the whistle this thing here uh the question that i had was just talking about your transition what did that kind of look like for you what what are some of the things that you i guess maybe replace or utilize to help you in that transition because you go from playing ball and that's pretty much 24 7 365 to like you said having to redefine yourself, but in redefining or find out who you are post-career, you know, what did you do as far as coping mechanisms and things that you implemented to replace that physical activity, that camaraderie, that social type of environment? Yeah. So, so a lot of that, some of, some of that had to do with just reaching out to other, other people, you know, Uh, being in the NFL, a lot of times you do things on your own. You know, I mean, you're the one that's out there practicing. You're the one that's out there grinding. You're the one hitting the weight room. But once you get into this transition period, now you have to reach out. Now you have to find out who you need to reach out to. Um, you know, people in specific, you know, areas of business that are doing certain things, you know, you're reaching out to them to find out, okay, what do you need to do? So, so part of it was me reaching out to, you know, former players who have come before me. Part of it was reaching out to people in the industry, whatever the industry may have been, and trying to find out, you know, what is it uh, is that doing, they're doing. Part of it was me just really trial and error. Uh, it was really just trial and error. I mean, not not knowing the, the the landscape and, you know, having having the roadmap, just really just trying it out, you know what I'm saying, on my own and really re- redefining and seeing what that was going to be as as well, you know, along with along with as we talked about before, you know, what I mean, you know, the mental the mental struggles, you know, of really just feeling confused, feeling, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying, you know, trying to find your purpose, you know, so what is my purpose, you know, here, like you think I'll never forget, and I tell people oftentimes, you know, when I went to when I would go to the weight room after my career, the question would be, what am I doing here? Like, why am I here? Like. What is the purpose of my lifts? Usually I did power clean squats, you know what I'm saying, presses, because I want because I wanted to be strong enough to hit Jerome Bettis and Eddie George in the mouth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, but now I'm not, I don't need that. I don't need to be exploding in the weight room like I was. You know what I mean? So what do I do? 
what yeah. type of workout do I do? Do I just jog on a treadmill? Do I just do three sets of 10? You know what I'm saying? The easy way. So really looking at my looking at my life and trying to find out uh, what what is it that I do and why? You know what I mean? And really, you know, and I think that's the biggest question, you know, that's the biggest question that we have to figure out is why? Why are we doing what we're doing? What is it feeling? And, you know, that goes back to me. That goes back to your heart. You know what I'm saying? Back to your heart, uh, which led the transitional transitional platforms that I that I did. You know, where was your heart at? What are those things that meant a lot to you? And, um, you know, and how can you fulfill it to the best of your ability? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Diddy, why do you, why do you think you, you talked about the why? Uh, why do you think it's the mental health has such a negative stigma, and especially in our our black community? What I think is one of the one of the key components in improving our community if we if we become allow ourselves to become vulnerable enough. Yeah. Why do you think the stigma has has been so negative for so long? Well, I mean, I think because it's been it's been a sign of weakness, you know, it's been it's been a sign of weakness. I mean, you go back, you know, years, 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 years ago, you know, and, uh, you know, our culture was not looked at as an even even culture. You know what I'm saying? We were looked at less as less than. So you looked at less than. I mean, you know, you look you you go back to slave, you know, what I mean, mm-hmm. you them selling slaves, you know what I'm saying? They wanted the best slave, you know what I'm saying? The one who was capable of this, that, and the other. And so, you know what I mean? Again, that's only been 400 years. I mean, it's only been several generations that those things have come past. And so nobody wanted to, nobody wanted to represent a situation or themselves in a negative light, you know what I mean? Having weakness, you know what I mean? And especially for us, you know, I talk about, you know, there's two, you know, there's a couple categories. One category as, as an athlete, you know, you never want to step on the field having or showing your opponent, you know, or opposition uh, or even yourself that there's a weakness. Mm-hmm. And so you hold those things in and you try to deal with those things. Um, and you never really speak out about those things. You just deal with them. Um, you deal with them alone. You know what I mean? The, the best that I got uh, to show my skills on the field, I got because of what I trained and how I trained by myself, you know what I'm saying? And so then I display that to the world. So you deal with mental illness, you deal with mental illness or, men, or you know, the mental conditions, you're dealing with these things yourself. You have no idea what's going on. You don't know what's normal. You don't know what's not normal. You don't know what the thoughts are coming to your head. Are they your thoughts? Are they, auto, you know, these automatic thoughts? You know what I'm saying? What, what, what are they? Where they come from? Nobody taught you that. Your generation didn't, before didn't teach you that stuff. And so it became a negative stigmatization because uh, you're dealing with something that's happening to you as a human person that happens to everybody to one degree or the other, but you don't know how to to handle it. You know what I mean? And then so you deal with one as an athlete, uh, you're dealing with that as an athlete and not wanting to be embarrassed, you know, not wanting to show weakness. You know what I'm saying? You're having aspirations. I mean, think about it. You go from college to the NFL, you know what I mean? The last thing you want to, to to try to show as as one of the qualities you have is I have some negative stigmatization or I have some type of mental uh, you know uh, disability that I'm dealing with. You know, what I mean, you want to show yourself in the most strength, and I think you know beyond the game, you know, what I mean, you want to feel you know the same the same way. You know, you know, I'll share you know personally. You know, you know, I've I mean I've dealt with mental mental you know mental illnesses as well. You know, what I mean, I've, I've, you know, it, they just come out of nowhere. I was brought up in it. I was brought up in a church. I was brought up, you know, I mean, this, that, and the other. And, uh, you know, and then, and then when, you know, when the negative thoughts start to come, you know, what I'm saying when thoughts against my faith start coming, you know, and you just don't, you just don't know. You don't know where in the world they're coming from, and how do you do it? You know, what I mean, the last thing you want to do is you. Last thing you want to do is look weak. The last thing you want to do is look vulnerable. Is it, you know, is create vulnerability within yourself, but you know, but but you're dealing with these things, and so I'm a big I'm a big advocate, you know, I mean, of people getting the mental health um, that they need. Not everybody had mental illness, but we all have a mental capacity. Um, mm-hmm. We have to work through, you know, what I'm saying to get us, you know, from one level from one level to the other. I mean, you look at the Olympics this past year, 
you know, with Simone Biles, you know, to one of the icon athletes coming out, taking a stand, Nomio Osaka, the tennis player, you know, mm -hmm. taking stands for talking about their mental health because we all we all deal with it uh, from one capacity, uh, you know, from one capacity to the other. And, um, you know, and it's something that we have to we have to deal with and hopefully we get the help that we need. Absolutely. Well, Donovan, just talking about your own journey, uh, mental health journey, like I said, you had some struggles and a lot of it is public knowledge, of course. Um, how did you kind of work through your own mental health struggles and what are some of the things that you've incorporated, you know, yeah. today um, in order to help manage that? Well, you know, one of the things, you know, is, is, is you know, getting the help from professionals, people that know more in this area. You know, if you're a player, you, you try to get, talk to your coach or you talk to a veteran um, or if you're or a corporate person, whatever, you talk to somebody who's done. No. done. Say that again. I normally like to blow the whistle yeah. like when you, when you <laughs> spit a jewel out like that. But it's something real simple that you just said. Yeah. I don't know if you even remember, but I'm, I'm going to kind of give yeah. you. Yeah. You, so, said, so basically, you said go to somebody who what? Somebody, you know, you go go to somebody who knows exactly what you may be going through. Go through, go to someone who has a skill set. Um, not, not auntie, auntie, because she got eight kids and, and a lot of wisdom. Not, not, you know, the, the coworker who you spend forty hours with. So right. you think y'all cool? Right. Now you go to a, you go to a professional. You know, what I mean, you go to a professional. If I want to be a if I want to be a running back, you know, if I want to be a running back, I'm going to come to UD. You know, what I'm saying because you know, what I'm saying you've done it. You've done it at the highest level. Somebody want to be a safety, a defensive back. You know, what I'm saying they you know they come to me because I've done it. You know, and sometimes the longer you've done it, or just more of the the type of athlete you are, will determine you know your ability to because not every coach. Here's the thing. Not every coach is a, is a good, I mean, not every player is a good coach. So again, it's an individual thing. You find the people, you know, mm -hmm. speaks to you that, that relates to you, that makes you feel relative and, and can understand you. So part of my journey was, you know, is, you know, part of my journey is still trying to find, you know, you know, finding those individuals who understand what it is that you're going through. And so mm -hmm. I realized that for me, a lot of my a lot of my battles, I didn't grow up with depression. I did not grow up with anxiety. I didn't grow up with none of that stuff. But what I did grow up with is I grew up with, you know, a heavy faith based, you know what I'm saying, backing. Now, you know what I'm saying, everybody who has good intentions may not always be the best intentions for you. You know what I mean? And so they may give you advice, they may give you suggestions, they may give you this, that, and the other, they may have traditions, all these things, but they may not be the best thing for you. And so, you know, a lot of my, a lot of my mental, capacity, you know, uh, you know, difficulties, you know, were based in the faith-based, you know what I mean? You know, it, within the faith-based world, you know what I mean? For those, you know, this is, this is kind of a channel, you know, and, and a podcast for both individuals who are faith-based as well as non-faith-based, but we all live in, we all have a spirit and we all, we all live in this, in, in, in this world. And, and so part of that understanding, understanding that, you know, we, we have things that we believe and things that we, you know, that, that we stand on, things that make that make up our character and our values and all those things. And when those things become on, you know, come under attack, you know, what I mean, you, where do you where do you go? Because you haven't practiced that as much. Mm -hmm. And so uh, so getting around other people. So I went to pastors. I went to, you know, what I'm saying I went to, you know, the people, you know, people that I knew that were strong in their faith. Um you know, I mean, to try to get help with that. But I also went to doctors, you know what I mean? I went to doctors and stuff like that, and psychiatrists, neurologists. I mean, like I said, you you name it, you you name it. Because um, for me to get to the place that I that I got, you know, that I got to, you know, and that I that I still deal with, you know what I mean? You know, because it's, it's mental, it's mental. It's not emotion, it's not just, not just emotional, it's not just physical, it's, it's mental and it's constantly going on. You know, what I mean, it's constantly over and over and over and over going, going on. Um, it's one of those things that trying to create a game plan for yourself in this mm -hmm. space. You know, what I mean, in this space, uh, trying to create that game plan. How do you and you know and create your team in this space? Mm -hmm. So where we had created a team, you know, what I mean, for the football field. You know, what does your team look like 
in this space for, for, for your mental, for your mental and emotional, you know what I'm saying? And spiritual, spiritual health. Mm. Man, those, those are definitely some Jews. I want to blow my whistle like several times. <laughs> you know, the correlation between football and, and life is, is always been instrumental. Always said that. Man. Always been instrumental. And one, one of the things that you've been saying, Dominus, and, and what I'm hearing is having that support system. That yeah. team of people, whether it's professionals, but also having family, friends, and that social environment that, that you feel that you can be transparent and vulnerable, and, and it's validating. It's a validating environment. And so I, I appreciate you expressing those things and, you know, providing that correlation between going to your, your position coaches and, and going to experts, whether it's on the football field or off the football field, those people that, that actually are knowledgeable about the thing that you're trying to improve or get better at. Yeah, yeah, and, and the thing that I think the distinction needs to happen also is that support doesn't mean doesn't equate to coping skills. Yeah, because support does include other 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 people. But when you cope, let's be honest, the healthiest way is to be able to do things on your own and not include other humans because at a time of crisis or whatever you may mental state you may be yeah. in, that person may not be available. May not be available. So you know, with that being said, now how do you, you know how does what is your kind of self care tactics? You know, yes. you know, I know you in the habit. You know, I, I hope you still like. We haven't, I haven't seen you, but you know, you still look great, man. So I, I'm thinking. I know you're working out. Like, yeah. what, are, what are your self care tactics, and what do you what do you do? Man? So part of self care, you know, again, is kind of like you know, creating a schedule. Creating uh, again it goes back to uh, I said in the very beginning. I went through a couple transitions. Um, you know, one transition, of course, from from the league. You know, I mean, to my, you know, those things that I used to do, the, the, uh, you know, the sports camps, the, the sports camps, the foundation camps, all those things. But then once I went through those mental health challenges, man, you know, what I mean, and basically, you know, it was weird, man. It was, it was on, it was on Kobe's death birthday. I mean, oh. not birthday, I'm sorry, but on, on the anniversary of his, of his death, oh. you know, that, you know what I mean? That I wind up taking about 30 something pills myself, man. Like it got to, it got to the point that it was just like, it wasn't that you wanted to die, man. It's just, you just wanted to escape, you know, yeah. wanted to escape. You know what I'm saying? Like you just felt like you just been just poked and pushed and prod and you tried everything. Wow. You know, that's where that, that hopelessness, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You know, kind of came in and, you know, and of course you get, you know, support and I had, had support, I had support, but uh, again, it was just, it just got to the point that it was just so, it was just so, it was just so heavy. And and that's all I could think about in my mind. I, I could not do, do anything. And so, uh, you know what I mean? To, to turn, to turn that off, uh, you know, from that. And so what I did is, you know what I'm saying? You know, I wind up taking pills, man. I wind up going through the whole process. I went to different eyes and different places, you know what I mean? OCD places, uh, concussion places, different tests. I went through all those different things to find out what's going on because I didn't ever have a history yeah. that I knew of this stuff, but this stuff was just to the tenth power, you know. So, um, you know, looking at it from then and to even now, um, I think some of the, some of the main things is really trying to create, you know, what is it that you do? What is it that you do? Because I took a break from a lot of stuff that I was doing, um, and so it took me about a, a year and a half, two years. And so I got back into doing little sports camps. The pandemic shut down a lot of the speaking stuff because you know people weren't gathering as they as they were before. Um, but I but but again, I think it goes all the way back. If you hear one thing, follow your heart, man. Your heart for other people. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We're all created with a purpose, and that purpose is not just to serve ourselves, but we're here with a gift. And that gift, you know, it's like you think about yourself like a tree. You know what I'm saying? And that tree, you know, I mean, you are that tree, but nobody comes to the tree just for the tree. They come to the tree for the fruit that it bears. And so wow. we all are here to produce and we all produce fruit. Some of my fruit was, you know, I mean, these camps, man, the information and knowledge, you know, what I mean, the wisdom, you know, what I mean, the, the speaking engagements was the, the, the information that I was given, the, the wisdom, the revelations, the understanding. Whatever they, whatever they were, me, me working for the NFL, working for the, with the guys transitioning in the league and out of the league, you know, and working with them. And so, remember, nobody comes to the tree 
to take care of the tree. They come to the tree to get the fruit and they walk away. So mm -hmm. we have to find out how do we take care of the tree? How do we take care of the root of the tree, which is us, which is our mental, which are emotional, which are spiritual. Mm -hmm. And that's where we build that team to take wow. care of the tree. You know what I'm saying? To take care of the, the root. Because again, without that, you know what I'm saying? You know, you're giving away all the fruit, you know what I'm saying? And then and the root is, is rotting away. You know what I'm saying? Then we have problems. So again, building the right team around you, you know, I mean, trying to create that schedule, trying to, you know, trying to involve yourself in things that, you know, are still, you're still passionate about. Um, and then also ways that you can help serve other people. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a lot of rewinds yeah. on this one right here. A lot of yeah. jewels, man. Yeah. A lot, a lot of jewels, man. Yes. <laughs> now nah, you, I, I started out this segment by saying, you know, you were one of the hardest, probably top five hitters in the game of history. Um, and that's not an exaggeration in my book. Appreciate it, man. Uh, and you've tackled probably the, I know you recognize, uh, I mean, excuse me, you acknowledge tackling the, the bus, and I've right. seen that one. I've seen you tackle Eddie George. <laughs> I've seen you tackle some of the biggest. Right backs in the league uh, and dominate. I see you tackling the biggest back you've ever faced now. Mm -hmm. And what I'm hearing you say is that, man, <clears throat> I'm coming at him head, head first like I, I've always done, but I'm coming with a little more control and faith, understanding of, of, of my abilities, and I'm going to dominate that too by being consistent with my self-care, taking care of myself, understanding that, you know, I am the tree, like you say, you know, mm -hmm. I have to take care of myself so that I can bear good fruit right. to those that I encounter, my family, my loved ones, my network. Uh, man, keep keep tackling, you, you, you still tackling. It ain't, it ain't, you ain't gonna, never gonna stop, man. I appreciate <clears throat> your transparency. Yes. Your openness, man, obviously, I know your heart. You know, I looked up to you going up uh, in Syracuse and, and how you just carried yourself. Uh, I knew what a professional was before I had got to be one myself by watching guys like yourself at the Cuse, man, under coaches, uh, um, the instruction and toolage, man. So just the fact that you're here and being open and talking about how you're tackling this, this, this big back as well, man, I, I'm proud of you and I appreciate it. Man, I appreciate it as well, man. It's, uh, you know, we all go through, you know, different phases of life, man. And and being honest, man, sometimes we don't know why, you know. We go through situations, man, you know, things happen in our lives, you know, and, and we, don't, we don't know why. And, and not to over-spiritualize every, you know, every single thing, but we understand that everything has a purpose. But every purpose is not known to man, you know what I'm saying? And so because, because of that, you know I me. Mean, sometimes we have to walk things through with with kind of blind faith. You know, you know, we have to trust. We have to trust that this will work out for our good. You know, what I'm saying if I keep moving, you know, you know, if our feet keep moving forward, you know, what I mean? instead of just side to side, you know, what I'm saying we'll get somewhere. You know, sometime soon. And so, you know, and that's basically what what we have what we have to do. You know, and then again, we talk about this man, the the, the power of connectivity the power of connectivity, being connected to people, you know, it's the difference between being listened to and being heard. You know what I'm saying? Being listened to, somebody can just be there and you could be just talking. But when you're heard, they can relate to you. They can relate to your heart. They can relate to your situation. They can make sure, you know what I'm saying? You walk away from that situation feeling, you know, the situation or circumstance may be the same, you know what I mean, at the moment, but you feel a sense of relief, like I've been heard that this person mm -hmm. understands me. And I think that from a brotherhood standpoint, you know, and I know you have, you know, females that listen to it as well from a sisterhood standpoint, but from a brotherhood standpoint, you know what I'm saying? We need, e we need each other. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we need each other. You know, what is that Goliath in our life? You know, at that moment, you know, what are we overcoming at this moment? You know, and so being able to relate that to one another and to be able to support one another in that um, is is basically another team. We're just, you know, we're just on another team. We have a different uniform. You know what I'm saying? It looks a little different. Um, you mentioned it in the beginning about the stigmatism about mental health and stuff. 
you know, we can break through the pride, you know, and, and, and realize and, and find out people that we can trust. Um, I think that it can, it can help us throughout our journey. Uh, because again, this, you know, our journey is not over. It's, absolutely. Adama, again, thank you for, for joining us, man. And I know you're doing a lot of, a lot of works out there in the community. So, so plug, plug your organizations and, and let us know what you're doing out there. Your foundation, Donna Darius Foundation, of course. Well, you, yeah, you can just go to DonnaMadarius.com. Like I said, things have shifted down. We kind of minimized some things. Um, I've, I've mm-hmm. done, you know, uh, you know, several, you know, a lot of sports camps, some tackling teaching camps, you know, things that mm-hmm. I've, I've, I've known and I've done over mm-hmm. the years, you know, a lot, a lot of times over the years. Um, you know, I may do some motivational speaking, uh, you know, to organizations and whatnot. So just basically diamondairs.com as far as the foundation, you know, we still do things, you know what I'm saying? We, you know, we, we go to city rescue missions, you know, homeless places, cut hair, you know, so again, it's not a, it's not a big fanfare, um, mm-hmm. events that we were doing, you know, that we were doing at the stadium where we had about 300 people, you know what I'm saying? At the stadium, we were bringing about 60 organizations that provide family services, you wow. know, so that way they can get connected with these families um, and different things like that. Um, and so again, our, our foundation basically a lot is event-based. Um, you know, there isn't any building, it's basically event-based, but an event to get people connected to each mm-hmm. other, uh, to the community, to wow. the organizations and whatnot. So DonovanMadaris.com is, uh, is basically where people will be able to see, you know what I'm saying, what's the next event coming up. Good deal. Man, I'm ready. I'm ready to support, man. I appreciate yes. you, DD. No problem, man. No God problem. bless you and the family, man. With some okay. support him. Go to Donovan Dares. Go, go to this foundation. Check him out. Stay in touch. Follow him. I do. He's still an inspiration. Keep being the motivation. Keep being God fearing, man. Walk by faith, man. Keep being an example for me and so many others, bro. Absolutely. Love you. We'll take care. We'll see you soon. Okay. All right, brother. All right. Take it easy. Man, yeah. Well, that's how, how we, you know, that's kind of that's how we do it in the kitchen. You know, that's how we do it. Wow, that that, that was awesome, man. Man, he, he uh, he's always been that way. Yeah, I knew exactly what it was. He's always been a man that's that just you know he's he speaks in that you know that sort of vernacular where you just right. know he's he's coming from a good place, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the fact that he, you know, he shared, you know, that's what I love about this platform is that, man, it's, it's, it's people that, that you've seen, that right. you've heard, right. that you don't know. Right. And they're willing to show you, to give you that no, mm-hmm. so that you can walk away. And, and, and when the show goes off, you can say, okay, I'm not the only one. Yeah, absolutely. And he's, he's, he's dealt with that too. Because a lot of people have a stigma of because you're a professional athlete. You have money, you have this, you have fame, all, but you don't have issues, you don't have challenges, you don't have mental it's strategy. Right that's that's yeah. not true at all. Right. You know, right. we're so we are human beings. Everyone is so we are so much alike. Right. And and all of us have a level of anxiety that we deal with. And we, deal, and we deal with stress differently. Yeah. We do it so much we don't understand it. We don't understand it. Don't focus focus on it. Right. Right. But 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 it is it is it is it is real. And so for guys like Donovan, for guys like you know the other guys that we've had on, on the show, right? To uh, to come on and say, hey, you know, this is you know this thing goes worldwide. Mm-hmm. You know, this is what I went through. This is this is how I got through it. This is what you don't know, right? You know what I'm saying? And so they can, you know, pick a nugget from that story. Yeah. It'll, I think it'll help. M- money and celebrity don't change the the inside of a man. No, absolutely. No, I mean, it doesn't change the inside of any person. Right. Any person. So again, you guys, great interview. Season two, man. We 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 chopping it up. <laughs> it's chopping pop, it up. Pop, pop. Like it's, every, it's, every week, man. It, it, it's coming. It's getting bigger and better. And I'm loving the guests. I loved our guest today. He was hitting hard on the field. He's hitting hard off the field. Yeah. Tackling, you know, issues out of the community, both internally, externally. You know, again, I appreciate you, Diamond Dare, stopping by. You know, you make sure you guys go check them out, DonovanDarris.com. Check us out. Go to YouTube. Check channel. us out. Subscribe. YouTube. Follow. Click the button. Yeah. Instagram. Twitter. If you got a little personal therapeutic 
Right. You know, you hit us on the Gmail account. We'll, we'll respond to you. Yeah. Okay. We're here for you. Amen. Season two. You know how we do it. We out of here. We'll catch y'all next time.